Welcome to a Fallout 4 episode. I'm continuing my coverage of new Creation Club content for Fallout 4 with this quest for the Anti-Materiel Rifle. I must say, this episode is extremely well written. I really enjoyed the quest, The Paper Mirror. If you plan on purchasing the Anti-Materiel Rifle and continuing the quest, I highly recommend you stop this video now because it contains major spoilers. Okay, we've entered the Museum of Witchcraft, and the quest marker is just ahead, about 14 feet away. This is the quest for the Anti-Materiel Rifle, which is an awesome sniper rifle. So hopefully we will find a note or holotape in here. And that's not it. And, oh, I think that's one of the bodies over there that I killed in the original quest. Oh, Nick is standing in front of it. Here we go. Ripley's story. Rip that's my character's name in the game. Ripley picked up the note. It was kind of a shock seeing her name there. Not that there wasn't a reasonable explanation for it. It could be she just misread the page. It could be the museum had just had her spooked. Or maybe some other wastelander just happened to share the same name Ripley, who I named after Alien, of course, was meant for her. Whatever the reason, Ripley decided to keep reading. Why the hell not? There was no guarantee the words on the page were referring to her. It was only a paper mirror, a reflection made up of words on a page. Besides, the only way to know for sure was to keep reading to the end. But even then, having read the page and learned her future, there was no reason to take the words seriously. At some point, she would go back outside and wander the wasteland again and perhaps even forget about the note altogether. Eventually, those travels would bring her to the dugout inn in Diamond City. Of course, Ripley wasn't there on business, she just wanted to relax. But as she walked into the inn, amidst the glow of neon, something to the right caught her eye. Posted on the wall was a bounty for a killer named Zane. Somebody wanted him dead. This is really cool. Check the bounty notice at the dugout inn. And there's my character, Ripley. Wow. This is very cool. Okay, Nick, time to go to the dugout inn. And as the pages in the book said, on our right, we'll find the bounty hunter's notice. Wanted in Concord. Open notice to anyone with a lot of guts and in need of caps. A wastelander named Zane has put together a gang that's been terrorizing the area near Concord. He should be considered armed and extremely dangerous. Keep what you kill. No other reward given. Find Zane and his gang at the Concord Speakeasy. So on Zane's body are a series of notes, Zane's story. 
The bounty on Zane's head had grown to a thousand caps. That's how notorious he'd become. But he knew that it didn't matter how expensive the bounty got or how many hunters came after him. All he had to do was flip the book ahead and read the next chapter of his story. It told him everything he needed to know. He knew when the attackers were coming from and when they'd arrive. The mirror showed him everything. But every time he turned a page, it brought him closer to the end. Now there were no more pages left. Someone was coming for him, someone bad, and no amount of preparation would help him survive. At first, Zane refused to believe it. He tore out the page in anger and slammed it on the table. When the time came, he would prove the mirror was a lie. He'd bunker down in the old Concord speakeasy and kill whatever son of a bitch came walking through that door. But when he read the words and discovered the hunter had a mirror of their own, he knew there was no escape. He was going to die tonight, and his friends would soon follow. The only measure of satisfaction he could get was to kill himself before the bounty hunter got there first. So he sat down and took out the vodka, the one he'd be saving for after he got out of the Commonwealth. He popped it open, took a sip, and with his other hand, he pulled the trigger. So Zane's story told the story of me on my way to kill him, a bounty hunter handwritten note it will betray you too interesting I really really like this quest and one more note under the combat knife Zane's associates Silas sent to faded glory laundromat on business Connor asshole stole that anti-material rifle we got from the gunners I know it he's starting a new crew near green tech genetics gonna pay him a visit and Ivy almost forgot about her probably still waiting at the Prost bar so those are his three gang members okay we have Silas at the Lexington laundromat Connor on the rooftop at Green Tech Genetics and Ivy at the Prost Bar. So let's start with Silas. Faded Glory Laundromat. Whoa. Okay then. Just wild cows running by. Let's go inside. I don't... Not exactly. <laughs> oh, now. Well, we found Silas and he was none too friendly. Let's see what's on his body. Silas's story. Zane handed Silas the pages that pertained to him and told him to head out to Lexington. They'd been stashing the bodies in the old washing machines for weeks now. Silas nodded his head reluctantly. The truth is he didn't want anything to do with whatever voodoo was in that book. The thing spooked him enough just by having his name in it. But what spooked him even more was when they found the book, some of the pages were missing. Okay, now we go to Connor on the rooftops near Green Tech Genetics. Hmm? Oh, it's on!
Get some, motherfucker! Hey, win this? Huh? Have it your way! What just happened? Something's out there. Lights out for you. And we found Connor's body and his note. Connor ripped the pages from the book one night when Zane was sleeping. He knew the boss hadn't gotten to that part yet, or else Connor would be dead. The truth was, he'd been thinking of killing Zane for weeks now. He was talking nonsense about retiring, going... To Far Harbor with some girl he met at a bar. Connor knew Zane was full of shit, but he also knew he was getting soft. That's why he built a little hideout near Green Tech Genetics in the tall building by the river. When the time was right, he'd set up base there and start his own crew with Zane's money and his gun. And what a gun it was. It was called an anti-materiel rifle and it ate through power armor like a hot knife through butter. Zane had no use for it. The only reason he had it was because of that book. So it was only right for Connor to use the same book to relieve him of the burden. And let's see where the anti-material rifle is. There it is, right at his feet. Penetrating, calibrated, powerful yes. anti-material rifle with a damage of 123. Really nice. Ignores 30% of target's damage and energy resistance. Okay, so that's completed. And we only have one more person. And that would be Ivy.
please let me go. Okay, we have the option to kill or Don't spare. Shoot me. Let's see what happens if we kill her. You don't belong here. Get lost! <sighs> On my first run through, she actually came at me and shot first. So this was kind of a different take on it. I think I like this one better. Anyway, let's get on with Ivy's story. Remember, just because a quest is o over doesn't mean there isn't more information or lore to find. Ivy knew she had to run. She had to get far away from the Commonwealth to a place where she could start over. She didn't mean to kill him. What happened was an accident. He told her he'd done this before, that he had experience with chems. It didn't dawn on her until later. He was just trying to impress her. The problem was... She hadn't heard from Zane in weeks. They had met only a month earlier at a bar in Good Neighbor. He said he was a smuggler. When she told him her story, he sympathized with her. He even promised to help her get to Far Harbor for a price. Something about him scared her, but she was desperate to leave and didn't know any other way. The plan was to meet here at the Prost Bar. Perhaps if she just stayed in place, Zane would come for her. It was too dangerous outside, and there were enough rations in the bar to hold her for another week. She just had to be patient. Someone would come. Unfortunately for her, someone did. And that was me. So out of curiosity, I am going to find out what happens when you spare her life. So I'm just going to head back outside. and reload from where I first came into the bar. Please, let me go! Don't shoot me. There's the cue that said we spared Ivy's life, so we'll just head back outside because there was another quest marker. We got trouble. Look who's back. So because we failed to kill her, we now have to deal with this group of bounty hunters. And we are supposed to find out what happened to Ivy. So I guess we head back inside the Prost bar to find out what happened to Ivy. And another note, Ivy's story. Ivy knew she had to run. She had to get far away from the Commonwealth to a place where she could start over. She didn't mean to kill him. What happened was an accident. He told her he'd done this before, that he had experience with chems. It just didn't dawn on her until later. He was just trying to impress her. Okay, same as before. Let's just flip to the next page. The problem was she hadn't heard from Zane in weeks. They had met only a month earlier at a bar in Good Neighbor. He said he was a smuggler when she told him her story. He sympathized with her. He uh, even promised to help her get to Far Harbor for a price. Something about him scared her, but she was desperate to leave and didn't know any other way. So she decided to believe him. Again, a repeat. 
The plan was to meet here at the Prost Bar. Perhaps if she just stayed in place, Zane would come for her. It was too dangerous outside, and there were enough rations in the bar to hold her for another week. She just had to be patient. Someone would come, and someone did. That's different. But while the hunter came to find a killer, something told her to stay her hand. It could have been pity for the young woman, or perhaps it was a desire to circumvent fate. Whatever the reason, Ripley chose to do what few before her dared to do. She rejected the story that was written in the mirror and took her fate into her own hands. When the other hunters came, Ripley fought them off. In that moment, Ivy saw her chance to escape. She knew of another exit, one where she wouldn't be followed. Part of her wanted to say thank you to the stranger for sparing her life, but she couldn't risk dying along with her. In the end, she left behind the pages of her mirror. Maybe that would be thanks enough. And now we know what happened to Ivy. And quest completed. Excellent. But there's more. If we head outside and search the bodies of the bounty hunters. So the note is Bounty Wanted in Beacon Hill. Open notice to anyone with a lot of guts and a need of caps. A wastelander named Ripley has been terrorizing the area near Prost Bar. She should be considered armed and extremely dangerous. Keep what you kill, no other reward given. I think this has been the best quest for Fallout 4 in the Creation Club, full of many surprises and extremely good writing. Thanks so very much for watching. I'll see you out in the world.